Hey everyone, so I'm here with Parth and today we're going to talk about the biggest press conference I've had today. And to be honest with you, nothing, nothing that happened was surprising at all. I mean, I would say that we kind of typically, we, we saw this coming and as much as it sucks to see what was happening today, me and Parth are going to break it down, see what you guys can expect going forward, you know, possibly QB position, QBs who we can look towards to. And without further ado, Parth, just give me your thoughts on first George McCaskey and what he had to say regarding, you know, our team and going forward. Um, you know, George McCaskey came out there um, and basically had no answers to any reporter that was asking questions at the end, uh, at the end of the day. Um, he just, you know, came in and said that the Bears had a good draft in 2020, um, that the team stuck together uh, when the, there was a six game losing streak, you know, the adversity happened, but they rebounded, I guess, and, you know, beat, beat the, beat, went, beat one, three out of the four last games and uh, made the playoffs. That's, that's the reasoning, I guess, he wanted to keep Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. Um, and also he said, you know, the draft in 2020 was a big part, um, you know, finding Darnell Mooney in the fifth round was a huge part uh, to keeping Ryan Pace. Um, to me, that doesn't sound like much to keep a general manager, especially, you know, he's been here for a long time. The, the, the team's never won a playoff game under him. Um, he drafted Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. Um, the team's gone eight and eight the both year, the last two seasons. Uh, we're stuck in mediocre, uh, mediocre seasons right now. And uh, uh, George McCaskey is basically okay. With that. That's what it seems like. Um, uh, Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy both have had their fair share of, you know, struggles and um, I guess high, high points too. You know, that 12 and four season, that was a great magical year for them. Um, even this eight and eight run, we, we went eight and eight this year. We still started off the season five and one. Things looked good at one point. But again, at the end of the day, this team definitely does not have what it takes to win games. Um, they cannot beat good teams. Um, we don't know who the quarterback is going to be there next year. There's a lot of uncertainty. But, you know, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are definitely back. Um, Chuck Pagano did retire. Um, you know, thank you to Chuck Pagano for everything he's done. But I'm, I'm thankful that he's gone. Uh, at the end of the day, we did need a new defensive coordinator. But, yeah, George McCaskey basically just said that the Bears are going to keep everyone because the team stuck together. Um, that's what I basically got out of it. Yeah, to me, like, I felt like the same thing that you felt like, but I felt like, you know, where's that accountability? Where, where, where is yeah. he calling out Lion Pace and Matt Nagy? Because, you know, he was asked multiple times, like, hey, what are the contract situations with Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy? And he failed answer that question right he didn't even answer the question on hey where do you see Matt where do you see Matt Nagy going forward do you see Matt Nagy and Ryan Pay's futures of this team and to me I feel like he never answered that question which makes me wonder like hey what is the accountability when, when is he going to take upon that knowledge and like take upon ownership of this team and say hey you know, uh, we had a bad season. Um, Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, they have like one more year to prove it. Where's the accountability? And I felt like that did not happen. Another thing that stuck up to me is, I don't know if this is true, but I heard somewhere on Twitter that, you know, they necessarily don't agree with fire and everyone. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Considering you won a six-game winning streak and the only games you won were against the Vikings, uh, against the Jack Jaguars, and against the Texans, not in that order, but those are three easy teams that any team could have beaten. The Packers would have, you know, beat them easily. To me, that doesn't really look like a team that can beat these harder teams that can, you know, excel in the playoffs. And, you know, if you're really judging Matt Nagy based on three teams that are on, on the downward spiral of their seasons, it doesn't really make sense to me. And I feel like there had to be some accountability, which there was none. Yeah, there definitely wasn't much accountability, especially from Matt Nagy. I feel like Matt Nagy, um, I don't think is was accountable. Um, and uh, George McCaskey did say, you know, fans like season holder, season holders, you know, emailed him and said fire somebody. Um, but at the end of the day, they did not. Um, the Bears will be looking for a new defensive coordinator. Personally, I don't, I have no clue what they're going to do there. Um, I, I personally would probably look in house. Uh, Jay Rogers. I don't know about you, but I think he's the best option for the Bears. Um, but yeah, uh, they, uh, there was no there was no one taking accountability. Um, the Bears 
are stuck in a weird spot. I think this could be the last year that Pace and Nagy could be on the Bears, unless if they have an incredible draft. Again, the biggest thing is they have to find a quarterback. Um, can Ryan Pace do that? I don't know. You know, he's had three chances. You know, he signed Mike Glenn, and that's the first thing he did, I guess, to find a quarterback. And then he drafted Mitchell Trubisky that same year. And then this year he traded for Nick Foles. All th three of those things did not work out. Um, all three quarterbacks are going to be bench quarterbacks at this point. Um, the Bears desperately need to find a quarterback in the draft or in the free agency. It's going to be difficult, especially because there isn't many options out there. You know, trading for Watson isn't as easy as people as think it is. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go into trades. Um, you know, free agency, Ryan Fitzpatrick looks like the best option out there. Um, again, the draft, the Bears are the 20th pick. It's kind of hard to find a quarterback at number 20, so you have to trade up to do that. Um, who trusts Ryan Pace again to trade up? Not me. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, again, the Bears are going to stick with them. Uh, it feels like they're going to settle for another eight and eight year. But again, the schedule even looks 10 times harder next year. So yeah, it, it's tough, tough times. Um, again, I don't control the team, so we don't have any say. So we just have to you know, cover them. That's, a, that's all we do at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. And I don't trust Pace either. And the thing is, we're sitting at 20th. And do I really yeah. feel like Mac Jones or Kyle Trask is the answer at quarterback? No, I don't. Because looking at both of them, you know, Bama quarterbacks have a history of not panning out in NFL. We even saw this with a report that came out yeah. today about Tua and how the Miami Dolphins players don't feel confident that Tua is the right guy going forward. And do I want to take a risk on getting Mac Jones? Or do I want to take a risk in getting Kyle Trask? You know, a guy like Florida, you know, who didn't really do so good when they came against, like, good competition. You know, he struggled. And with Mac Jones, how good of a quarterback is Mac Jones with the amount of weapons he has? You know, any quarterback can excel in the Bama system with um, amazing receivers. And I don't know if I trust Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace to get a quarterback. You know, honestly, the only thing that can save Ryan Pace's job at this point is if you can trade up and get Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, you know, that even that is a risk. Trey Lance, get Justin Fields, and somehow, I don't know if this would be possible, but somehow Trevor Lawrence. I doubt it, but um, that's the only way his, his job could be saved. And, you know, you talked about Watson. Does Watson even want to come here? It's my question. Like, you know, this is a team that passed on him. Does he want to come here? But he... Would he waive his no trade clause to come here? And yes, those are my questions for the Bears going forward. Those are my questions going forward to see, you know, is Brian Pace the guy? But what really stuck out to me today was Ted Ted Phillips and his inaccountability. In like, you know, watching Ted Phillips get into an interview, I wonder how is this guy the president? You know, you look at his tenure, you look at him, he's not he's not a good president at all. He, he's horrible, in fact, to be, to be honest with you. Like that amount, like any other president on any other team would be fired. That's, and that's what is the frustration of all us Bears fans, you know, no accountability. What, what do you think about what I just had to say? Yeah, um, I think he, he's not accountable because he's, you know, he's given such a big um, part of the team, I guess, you know, um, they did say he has no part in like controlling the football operations, but again, he gets to control if he wants to fire Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, which at the end of the day makes no sense. Um, and again, he's, he's, he's connected to the whole McCaskey family, that whole family, you know, is super supportive of whatever Ted Phillips does. And at the end of the day, uh, it's a business. Um, it's not a family business. There's a whole entire franchise that is being depended on. It's a whole city of Chicago, you know, the third biggest city in the whole, uh, whole entire country. Um, one, one of the biggest and most loyal fan, pay, fan bases out there that's getting disrespected every day and every week, every Sunday. Like, you know, put, seeing, the, seeing this Bears team is disrespectful, the, the way they come out and the, the way they've <laughs> – done everything so far it, it's frustrating um but you know ted phillips is probably not gonna be fired um for a very long time that's for sure um there won't be any accountability unless the fans stop showing up to the stadium stop buying the gear at the end of the day that's not going to happen us bears fans are too passionate for that so you know they, they know that that's not a big deal but yeah they're they, you know, there is a big problem. Um, you know, Alan Robinson was saying that they couldn't get a contract done. You know, I don't know how Ryan Pace wasn't, you know, slammed about that in the press conference. You know, someone's got to definitely 
uh, tell him why we could like he uh, is is there's a lot of lot of bad things that went on this year and no one's you know that none of that got talked about or like were you know taken into account by George McCaskey or Ted Phillips when you know thinking about firing uh, Maggie Nagy and Pace and even when thinking about firing Phillips uh, McCaskey you know did not think about any of that because the team stuck together during the six game losing streak and you know still made the playoffs. The end of the day, the Bears did make the playoffs for the second time, um, the third time this in like 12 years, I think. Um, and then, but again, we don't, we have not picked up a win in the longest time in the playoffs. Um, and eight and eight definitely does not cut it. Um, the Bears are trying to win games. Uh, plus, we haven't been able to beat Green Bay the last two years. That's something we got to take into account too. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, you have some very good points that you said about Ryan Pace and he was asked about, he was asked about Allen Robinson. He was asked, Hey, have you and Allen Robinson been talking? And he said, yeah, me and Allen Robinson have a great relationship. And I was like, that's exactly why I was confused. Uh, That's why they're, they're dodging questions um, by just saying, I mean, I know that for a fact, they dodged so many questions today. Uh, there's a lot of lies, but again, um, hopefully they can get it done, but it's all good. Yeah, to me, I, I don't have a, I have a very, I'm not very optimistic for next year. And I hope that honestly, I hope that we don't win a lot of games because hopefully that will, that'll will make some change. And I think that I, I disagree with you. I think that fans will not go to games if this continues on, you know, a lot of fans are really angry, like, you know, JJ Sinkovitz, all the Bears, all the Bears supporters, you know, asked really good questions and they all got dodged. They know the frustration that we feel, you know, and it seems like the ownership doesn't feel. So I think that, you know, we're going to have to take a page from what Bulls fans did and we're going to have to not drop the games, not buy any merch because that's what's going to demand change. And, you know, that turned out great. That's what the, the reason has, but this is what they saw with the Bulls and they may change. So hopefully that can happen with the Bears and stuff. Yeah. What do you think going forward? What do you think about, you know, the quarterback position going forward? Like, who do you see realistically and us getting, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, based on another thing that this this press conference showed us is Trubisky's more than likely gone. Mm -hmm. I think you know that. I think we all know that he's gone because they did not. Say, yeah, hey, we're bringing back Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky is not going to play football for the Chicago Bears next year. They, they threw him under the bus real quick. Um, you know, it, whenever if they had to uh, answer a question about a problem, uh, yeah, the, we, the quarterback, yeah, the quarterback needs to be that, that, that was an issue this year. Um, you know, Mitchell Trubisky was not the only quarterback who played for the Bears this year. Uh, Nick Foles did, and he was much worse when he did. Let's not forget that. So, you know, no, no, let's not throw Mitchell Trubisky under the bus. Nick Foles also deserves a lot of blame. And so does the Matt Nagy. I, I don't throw the blame at the, both of those guys, actually. At the end of the day, personally, there's a lot of blame to go around. But I think I will blame Matt Nagy the most for that. But, you know, they threw it at Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky. But, you know, we don't control that. Um, but for the new quarterback, I have no idea what the Bears are going to do. Personally, uh, I would probably draft one. Um, or try to trade for Deshaun Watson. Um, I know that's that sounds really hard, uh, and that's a lot of first round picks that we're probably gonna have to give up as well. But the Bears are stuck in no man's land. You know, being at the twentieth pick, it's it's hard to find a quarterback, um, especially because uh, this quarter this class is quarterback heavy. Um, you know, there could be five quarterbacks taken in the top ten, so the Bears are definitely have to move up. It feels like. Yeah, definitely. I think that. It's it, it, there's going to be a big move coming because Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy both know that, hey, if we mess up this year, yeah. we're gone. Yeah. And I think that, you know, even Ted Phillips knows that. I think that he looked really stressed out in his in this interview. They all seem to be on edge. All, all four of them seem to be on edge today. And I think there's a real possibility that we could see some major changes happen if, if nothing is fixed this season. So hopefully something happens. And hopefully we can see some changes. Uh, personally, for DC, you know, Jay Rogers looks really good. You know, you can bring in Matt Patricia. You can bring in, try to get one of the Lions. You can try to get someone from the 49ers, like a D-line coach, someone from the Broncos. But I mean, we'll see where that goes. I think personally, we'll go with Jay Rogers. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see where that happens too. 
Yeah, that's going to be another uh, spot they're going to have to fill up. Um, again, they're familiar with filling up the defensive coordinator position. They did it, you know, two years ago with finding Chuck Pagano. Um, I think it's going to be Jay Rogers. Um, I think it's going to be the in-house hire. It's a, it's a safe hire. Um, but again, I would not be surprised if they looked at someone like Matt Patricia. Um, you know, he brings a lot of experience. But again, um, you know, we've beat his defense so many times. I feel like it's not worth breaking in Matt Patricia. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's what I definitely would have to agree with you. I think that. And then also another thing that worries me is what's the whole deal with A-Rob? Cause- yeah. He's out. He's definitely gone. Um, I know for a fact he does not want to re-sign here in Chicago. They could tag him. Again, that would not be the best option. I feel like if we bring in a young quarterback, you do not want to have a wide receiver who does not want to be here. This Bears wide receiver core is very, 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 very poor. Um, you know, if, if Darnell Mooney becomes your best wide receiver and it's his second year um, and he is a uh, not he's not I, I I love everything about Mooney I think he's my favorite player on the team right now but there's no way he should be the wide receiver one next year on the Bears the Bears still for me will need to improve at wide receiver next year I think Riley really needs more chance to play I think Anthony Miller should get cut same with Javon Wims those two have no business of being on the Bears next year yeah definitely I don't know if you heard but Mike Fury said like the, on uh yeah. on Dr. Phil's network that uh Basically, the whole the IQ in, in the football in, in the Bears wide receiver room is really low yeah. outside of Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson. And that just makes a ton of sense looking at what happened on Sunday. You know, I like Anthony Miller, but the regression this season, like where has he been since the Falcons game? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I don't know where Anthony Miller has been. been. Consistent player. Um, you know, week one, he had a couple big cat, cat, catches against Detroit, which eventually won us the game, the game-winning touchdown he had. You know, Atlanta, he had that big touchdown as well. And then he hasn't shown up ever since. Uh, he's been known to be an inconsistent player. Uh, I think last year I had high hopes for him. And it was super inconsistent throughout the year. And then this year we saw it from the beginning. Um, you know, week one was a great game. Week two came out and dropped two big balls against the Giants. And then week three came out and fired again. And then basically I haven't seen him since. Um, you know, uh, he, I think, got upwards of 500 yards this year. But, again, that's not something we expected out of Anthony Miller. Um, we were looking at an 800-yard year from him, you know, for him to step up and be that wide receiver two on the Bears. And he couldn't even do that. And he lost his job to a fifth-round rookie, um, Darnell Mooney. And I'm, I'm also surprised that Riley really does not get more action. I feel like whenever he's on the field, uh, he get, he catches the ball. Uh, he does some work. I think he's better than um, Miller and Wims at this point. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, you know, I, he might, you know, be struggling in practice, but again, I don't think that matters because whenever I've seen, you know, Riley Ridley on the field, uh, he's, he's, he's been productive whenever he's, I mean, he's, he had a couple snaps this playoff game. He, I think he had, a, he had two catches. So, so it's productive enough for him to, I think, get more playing time than a guy who's known for just boxing, I guess, because Javon Wims, you know, that big drop, he also had that, that cost to the Bears. And then Anthony Miller, again, um, he, he's also had, inconsistent players well. yeah definitely and I think that with Riley Ridley it's like what are these coaching decisions these decisions to activate a player or not to activate a player like the healthy scratches like it's making me scratch my head you know like why is Riley Ridley playing when someone like Javon Wims is playing that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me and even before even before the fight like I thought that Riley Ridley had a lot more to bring to the table you know he's a fourth round pick and with the Bears are using him, they're using him like an undrafted guy. I don't understand yeah. you wasted not, a lot of capital. I think he was so highly um, recruited. I mean, not recruited, highly um, thought of, you know, in the draft. Uh, you know, we got him in the fourth round. I thought we were lucky to find him in the fourth round. You know, and his brother is a great wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. So, yeah, it's weird that we're not playing him. It's It doesn't make sense. Hopefully next year he gets a lot more playing time. I would not mind if Riley Ridley is our wide receiver three next year. I also think the Bears are definitely going to be looking to bring one or two wide receivers in the draft and free agency this year. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, you have some good points. And, I, I mean, the receiver just, just puts in more like, I just don't think next year is going to be good. Do you have, an, you have a question mark at quarterback? You have a question mark at receiver. You know, you don't know what your defense is going to be. I just don't see next year being very good for us. And hopefully that maybe that was another reason that he brought those two back, looking at those past two seasons, looking at 
hey, maybe this reason I can have an excuse into firing me. So I don't know. Maybe that was the reason. And last three questions. What do you think happened with Robert Quinn this year? Um, uh, yeah, that Robert Quinn was a disappointment. So was, I mean, the whole entire defensive line too. You know, I thought Akeem Hicks was a disappointment. I love Akeem Hicks, but, you know, he only had three and a half sacks on the year. Robert Quinn, a guy who I thought was going to have double-digit sacks this year, um, he barely got any sacks. Um, I thought Chuck Pagano definitely, you know, um, limited the defensive line a lot of, a lot of the times. But, again, um, these guys struggled heavily through this year. Uh, Robert Quinn struggled with an injury, he said. Um, again, I don't know how much truth there is to that. What hurt the most was seeing Leonard Floyd have a big year. Um, that's what hurt the most to me, um, again. I hope Robert Quinn can come back and have a big year next year because I know he won't be cut. Um, he's definitely going to be here for next year. Uh, he has two years guaranteed on his contract, so I think the Bears keep him around for next year, and hopefully he can have a big year next year because we definitely will need that. Yeah, do you see us trading anyone on a defensive side of all looking at, you know, we um, might not be I competitive could, yeah, for a few years? Kyle Fuller or Akeem Hicks this year. Again, um, I don't know what will happen. Um, again, at the end of the day, they're going to have to find a franchise quarterback. I think that's their number one goal. So if that means you got to trade someone like Akeem Hicks, um, Kyle Fuller, you got to do what you got to do to find that franchise quarterback. Yeah, definitely, man. Anything else you want to share from the past conference or or anything, any other thoughts with the Bears? No, man. Thanks, but thanks for having me on. I enjoyed talking some Bears football. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for coming on.